Hello everyone. Um, I hope you enjoyed the last video talking about equilibrium and the flow of time and how equilibrium really exists whenever that entropy is maximized. And so in this video, we're going to work off of that idea and we're going to work on an application of maximizing this entropy and seeing what happens to the system whenever we allow the entropy to change and become as high as it can and ultimately reach equilibrium. Okay, so to do this, we have to remember what the system and the surroundings are. And remember, the system is the thing that we care about. And for entropy, the universe is the system plus the surroundings. And to find the change in entropy, we take the integral of dq divided by t. Um, and remember that this dq is an inexact differential. And so we have to take into account the path. Um, of the process in order to be able to integrate over that Q or the system, the process needs to be reversible. Okay, so this is the thought experiment that we are working on. Initially, we begin with a system in which I really have two components. I have the red ideal gas species on one side of the container and I have the blue ideal gas species on the other side of the container. And what you can think of is really that we have two containers that or we have a container with a barrier that is separating these two gases. But the key here is that they are both ideal gases and initially they are separated. What happens is that we remove the barrier and we allow the gases to combine, to mix. And so as time progresses, so this arrow is the arrow of time. As time progresses, the gases mix. The energy of the system does not change because we're not changing the numbers of particles. Nothing is reacting. Not, we are just mixing. And so that energy is constant. So DE is equal to zero. Okay, so to think about this mixing, we're going to break up this problem into thinking about gas A and then gas B. And so in this problem, we really have, we're gonna have some number of moles of ideal gas A in its original volume VA, and it's going to expand into the final volume VB. And with this information, we can use the, we can, Think of this the same way that we thought of the expansion a few videos ago and be able to come up with a formula for the delta S of this process. And so to do that, we have DE equals TDS minus PDV, and this is equal to zero because we said that the energy doesn't change. And so we have DS is equal to P over T dV. And we can use the ideal gas law and get that dS is equal to nR 1 over V dV. And so what we need to do is we need to integrate both sides and we get that delta S and we're going to say of thing A is equal to NAR natural log of RV final, which is going to be VB 
over, yeah, we're going to just call it VF, the final volume over the initial volume. And now we can do the same thing with ideal gas B and go through the same derivation and we get a very similar formula. It's just that now we are thinking about our moles of B and so we can get delta S of B. So now we have to put it together. And we need to make it a little bit more specific. So if we say that this final volume is really the volume of A, so our, our volume of A goes to the middle, this is VA, and then VB is the other half. Our total volume, VF, is going to be equal to the VA plus the VB. And so this, remember that we said that delta S is going to be equal to NR LN of VF over VI. This allows us to make our delta S expressions more specific. And so really all I'm doing is I sub in our specific volumes for VF and VI, and I get these expressions. Now remember that entropy is a state function, so it doesn't matter what steps I take to get there. And so that means that I can add the results of A and B and be able to get the delta S of the system. So now this expression of VA over VA plus BV, or even NA over NA plus NB, these are complicated and hard to write. And so we use what is known as a mole fraction. And that's given by this X with the subscript of what it is. And it's basically the fraction of particles or volume that one of the things that one of the species fills. And so what we can do is we can sub this in to our expression for delta S of the mixing and we get this expression. And if we remember our log rules, remember that um, if we have ln of x to the a, this is the same thing as a times the ln of x. And so in this case, our x is to the minus 1, and so we can bring the minus 1 out front, and we can rearrange and get this final expression for delta s of mixing. Okay, so let's do an example. So the example is to calculate the entropy of mixing when we combine 0.1 moles of neon with 0.9 moles of argon at 298 Kelvin and one bar. You may assume that both neon and argon are ideal gases. You can also assume that the pressure and the temperature do not change during this process. So what we are going to do is I am going to assume that gas A is neon and gas B is argon. And so we found that the delta S of mixing is equal to minus R times 
n a l n of x a plus n b l n of x b. And we also know that x a is equal to moles of a divided by moles of a plus moles of b, which if we plug things in, we get 0.1 moles of neon divided by 0.1 moles of neon plus 0.9 moles of argon, giving us 0 0.1 for xa. And likewise, I can do the same thing with xb. And I get 0 0.900 for xb. So now it just becomes a process of plugging and chugging. And so delta S of mixing is going to be equal to negative 8.314 joules per Kelvin mole times 0 0.100 moles times the natural log of 0.1 plus 0 0.900 moles times the natural log of 0 0.9. And if we plug this into our calculator, we get that the delta S of mixing is a positive 2.70 joules per Kelvin. This is spun, this is the delta S is positive. And so this process is spontaneous. Meaning that this is what we would expect. If we have two things that are separated and we remove the barrier, we expect them to mix. This is, this is the same thing that happens if we have a glass of water and we put in some drops of food coloring. Those drops of food coloring are not going to stay as drops on top of the water. Instead, they are going to mix and incorporate and, and maximize their entropy. It's a spontaneous process. No work has to be done. Okay, and I realized as I was going through this that I have my units wrong this answer should just be joules per Kelvin.